welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Ashland. If you have not seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. And as you know, my day job is as an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell. But this is not about my day job. It's about my friends, Frank and Mary. We've seen, you've seen in my presentations, I talk about Frank and Mary. Their goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that's in Ashland, that means here. So the point of the show usually is to focus on the people you need to know and the, and the programs you need to know about in order to stay right here in Ashland. I've got my wonderful co-host, Steve Mitchell. We've been doing these shows now for a couple of years, I think, Steve. Yeah, it's been a couple and, of years, Arthur, yes. And, but, I, but we've got some really special guests today who, who are not you, you know, lo local to Ashland, but are really to speak, talk, to talk about the value of the programs like the show that we're doing right now and the people that bring you these shows. So Steve, you wanna, you wanna talk about who we've got today? Sure. So thank you, Arthur, as always. And uh, so we're deviating a little bit from our normal uh, programming. Uh, and we have, I think, a couple of very exciting guests. And uh, so I'd like to introduce uh, Mike Wassenaar, uh, who is the president and CEO of the Alliance for Community Media, and David Gauthier, who is the president of Ma Mass Access. So welcome to the show, gentlemen. Uh, it's really, uh, it's a pleasure to have you. I know Barbara's wanted to have, have both of you on our, our show for quite a while. So this is, uh, this is your, uh, your time in the sun in Ashland. And uh, so if you would just take a few minutes, uh, Mike, we'll start with you. Uh, you. Describe your organization, you know, what's your goals, what's your mission, and then we'll turn it over to David. And then we can talk about, you know, some of the issues now that we have with, with community, community media. So Mike, why don't you start? Thanks uh, for the opportunity, Stephen. And it's good to be here. Uh, I'm Mike Wassenaar. Uh, I'm the president and CEO of the Alliance for Community Media, which is a, a membership association made up of public educational and government television channels around the United States. So it's organizations like Ashland, uh, all throughout the United States, in all 50 states, actually. Um, that provide uh, public access, educational access, and government access television to local communities. Uh, typically, the programs are on cable channels, but increasingly, they're also uh, featured uh, on the internet and on radio as well. Um, and they're really devoted to local expression, uh, local information, uh, local news, uh, local culture, um, in, in ways that commercial television really can't operate just because of the the scale issues that are involved with commercial television. Um, so um, we uh, um, are unique in, in lots of respects because we, we reflect the local communities, we're really profoundly local communities. So if you think about like the situation in Ashland, you can kind of, kind of go to Hawaii metaphorically, maybe and not literally metaphorically, there's gonna be a community like yours in Hawaii, believe it or not, that has a television channel that looks and feels like the local community. Same thing's true with any other of, of our 50 states and communities all throughout the 50 states. Um, so um, that's kind of our role. I'm based in Washington, D.C. I work with policymakers uh, here in Washington, but I also work with organizations all around the country uh, who are our members. Great. Thank you, Mike. Uh, so David, why don't you give us your, uh, uh, your uh, info? Sure, and uh, thank you very much for, for having us here today. And I'm glad you went to Mike first because it makes my job a little bit easier describing it. So if you can take what Mike does on a national level and just sort of pare it down to a statewide level, that's sort of what Mass Access does. We're that advocacy agency uh, within the state of Massachusetts, very similar uh, goal-wise as to what the Alliance does. So we are trying to uh, get community media stations across the Commonwealth to share information and share resources. So we're hosting uh, the Massachusetts Media Exchange, which allows community media stations to share programs very easily from one municipality to the next. We're also doing a lot of advocacy uh, in lawmaking uh, for the statewide level. So it's a lot of the similar sort of things, bringing education and just trying to uh, sort of raise the quality of community media stations and what what we can do, the services that we're providing to municipalities across the state. So very similar, and uh, that's what we're up to. 
Very good. Well, appreciate that those introductions. And uh, you know, as as you may or may not be aware, uh, you know, our show, uh, as Arthur described, is is oriented towards the senior demographic. And uh, our last show, uh, as an example, we had our COVID nineteen task force uh, director come in talk about the. Uh, what was going on with the vaccine distribution uh, and so on. So that's the kind of the themes that we run by. Um, so for, for a question for both of you, um, you know, in this era of COVID-19, how have you adjusted, how have you modified, how have you directed your, your resources to, because I, I think Arthur and I, we've talked about this uh, uh, it, obviously the importance of community media has increased over the last year and uh, as, a, as a mechanism for, for information. So if you can address that, that'd be great. Um, well, let me, let me start off and, and David, you could talk a little bit more about what's happening in Massachusetts specifically, I suppose. I, I think the first thing really that's unique about our stations um, generally is that we've been devoted to making sure that members of the community aren't isolated. Um, I, I think that's extremely important and it's left unsaid. A lot of times, um, you know, television stations are about making money and they're about selling advertisements and having eyeballs uh, show up and, and watch, watch programs. Well, that's important. Having audiences is extremely important. But caring about connecting with audience is like a core issue within our organizations. So uh, one of the most profound impacts that we've, saw, we've seen across the country is breaking down the social isol isolation that um, has happened as a result of COVID. Now, this is for, for seniors, certainly, but also for school age, uh, school age uh, families, um, you know, uh, mothers and fathers is trying to figure things out as they're trying to, you know, uh, make their make their way on a day to day basis. Um, so a lot of what our organizations have been doing is either been doing social outreach uh, for different types of uh, cultural programs, religious programs, social programs, uh, but then also educational outreach. So that school districts and community colleges have the ability to be able to do their work in really a difficult environment. So we've seen that a lot, a lot across the country. And then I think the, the political uh, outreach issue is extremely important with, you know, sort of getting health information out to folks that's accurate and clear. A lot of our organizations are involved with that because of our relationships with health departments and with local government, whether it be city or county, depending upon the state you're in. And then also on the flip side of this, one of the things that I think is extremely important is to make sure that democracy still works. Um, you know, so you know this in Massachusetts, town meetings are extremely important in the life of local democracy. Uh, but this is true for communities across the country. Um, a lot of our organizations really had to pivot rapidly uh, during the, the initial parts of the outbreak to ensure that local government still was open, still was communicating, and that participation from uh, local citizens was still being recognized and valued. So, you know, you see this all across the country is that our operations have helped to ensure that um, local meetings still continue, that you still have, still have public input on, you know, the, the business of, of government, which is still going on in America. That, that hasn't stopped as a result of COVID. Um, um, so we're, we've become this sort of it's very interesting. Um, I think in a lot of communities, we're sort of this vital connective tissue, a social civic connection, if you will. Um, and, and that's what we've been seeing uh, across the country um, uh, during what has been a pretty difficult time. Yeah. Well, uh, Steve and I have been talking about the, uh, the fact that they've got a town meeting that's coming up. And, and you know, we're, 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 we're totally about towns and communities here in Massachusetts. And, the, and as you say, the show must go on and town meetings, are, many of which are gonna be very kind of long this year because they were kind of truncated last year as a result of COVID, have got a bunch of issues. And we're really talking about, you know, finding, you know, finding those issues, the, the, the significant Warren articles and using the show as, as a way of really kind of helping people understand the pros and cons in a way that goes beyond just watching the, the meeting, you know, watching the select, you know, watching from a distance. And I think it goes to that point of really that kind of participation is just really important. Yeah. Really well, important. And, and, and we've seen this across the country, and maybe David can talk a little bit about this from the Massachusetts perspective, is that um, organizations are doing much more meeting coverage than they did prior to COVID. I mean, it, it's accelerated, and, and that's a good thing to my mind. 
Um, and then also viewership has gone through the roof in many communities because there's no local content. There's no local newspaper in many communities. There's very, very little information about sort of where you can get, info, you know, what, 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 where you could go for f food assistance, for example, or how, you know, you look at what's happening in Texas right now with uh, the, 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 the cold, cold weather spell as a part of the, the, the vortex, local information is extremely important <laughs> to be able to kind of help people make it through the day. Um, that's what our organizations are devoted to in a way that commercial, commercial television or commercial radio isn't. Um, so it's a distinct advantage that we have because we, we're part of the communities that we're serving, so. Yeah, it's a good point uh, about, uh, you know, one of the, the challenges that we discuss at the local government level, of course, is citizen engagement. How do we improve that? And I will tell you that uh, um, over the last year uh, of, uh, of this pandemic, uh, we've observed an increase in civic engagement through the various platforms that we utilize. Obviously, it, it, very importantly, the, the uh, cable access uh, process as well. So, you know, hopefully we can maintain that over, you know, once we're beyond this, this you know, the, the, the COVID-19 umbrella. So, uh, so David, how about uh, from Mass Access's uh, point of view? Well, I can, I can echo a lot of the sentiments that have been made already, but I, I will say, you know, I couldn't be prouder to be part of this industry right now because I really do feel that as crazy as the last year has been in a lot of different levels, you know, and I, it's been an opportunity for community media stations to really sort of step up and, and prove their worth to the municipalities that they're supposed to be serving, right? And I think at every turn, just about, we have answered that call. You talked a lot about the municipal meetings, you talked about town meetings and all of the things that go into keeping the town functioning. Those are very important. Uh, obviously we're, we're working very hard with school kids and trying to deliver content and help teachers get the resources that they need to, to, to get their curricula out to the students. And I will say that, you know, one thing that's been really, uh, rewarding for me is that I've been working with the Mass Councils on Aging and the AARP of Massachusetts, different organizations who are serving older adults in Massachusetts communities. We recognize that older adults in Massachusetts are really the core audiences uh, for community media stations. Mostly they are the ones who are gathering content or, and taking an entertainment in a more traditional way. So they're the ones that are still flipping on the cable channels. You know, they're looking for schedules. They look for, you know, when their certain shows are on. Whereas younger people are, are typically doing things a little bit different these days. So we have made a lot of partnerships over the last year or so, just trying to figure out how we can end loneliness and, and social isolation and those sorts of things, especially in the older communities. So we've, uh, we've partnered with the Mass Councils on Aging they are able to log in to some of our resources and they are able to go through the programming that's available and make recommendations to the community media centers. I've been sitting on a task force with the AARP of Massachusetts for the last six months. And we're talking about not just content, we're also talking about how do we get older adults in the community tied in? You know, Do they need devices? Do they need a better connection to, to the internet, you know, how can, how can we get the tools into their hands so that there isn't a lot of loneliness and isolation within these communities? So I think this was an opportunity for community media to really prove what we offer. And I think it's a, it's a very good point what Mike brings up too about, you know, most of us being nonprofit organizations or, uh, or city or town departments so we don't sort of have the same goals as the traditional cable television station. We are really all about the community. It's the last bastion of real hyper local connection that you're going to get. And, you know, hopefully we're able to keep this going and capitalize on some of the success that we've had over the last year. Yeah, that's, that's great. Uh, you know, we've talked about uh, obviously the opportunities that, that have been presented over the last year. And so let's, 
segue into you know some of the concerns, the issues, the threats. David, I had reviewed before our, our uh, meeting this morning um, your strategic plan uh, you worked on in 2019, and, and you you have a slide that addresses some of the threats and concerns. And you know, I, I, I'm not going to run through all of them, but obviously funding is it continues to be a major issue. Uh, you know, the uh, maintaining relevance, I think you've addressed that, that, you know, actually COVID has increased the relevance for, for cable, but why don't you, you and Mike address, you know, the concerns and the issues that you see moving forward? Sure. Uh, I mean, a lot of those threats are financial, as you can imagine, if we don't have the money to pay the rent and pay the salaries and heat the building, we can't offer the the services that we're trying to offer. So the mission all sort of depends on having the money to, to continue to, to fund what we do. So if you're, if you're not really sure about how community media gets funded, at least in Massachusetts, and it's a little bit different, not to get too far into the weeds here, but folks who pay cable subscriptions are paying a little bit of a, a peg fee uh, every month on their bill. It's usually a couple of bucks. And that's what goes to fund the community media stations in Massachusetts. And and Massachusetts is a little bit different in that each municipality will uh, negotiate these con these cable contracts individually. So they, they, they negotiate locally. So what's good for Winchester may not be good for Stoneham, may not be good for Woburn, but, you know, everyone has almost everyone has their own community media station in Massachusetts. And, you know, some are regional uh, and some don't have any. Some municipalities in Massachusetts still don't have cable service at all. So there is no cable access there. But uh, we are a little bit unique. There aren't many states who have that local franchise from the way Massachusetts does. But it does all depend on, um, you know, a lot on the money. And so we are looking at that. We are dealing with the uh, with the apathy situation, right? Is is this is our industry viewed as a thing of the past? Is this something that was, you know, before the internet came around, this was the thing to do uh, before YouTube? You know, folks would create content and put it out on local access because they it was the only way for them to reach a wider audience, right? So uh, we're trying to change that narrative and say, well, listen, you know. Technology has changed a lot of things, but there is still a place at the table for community media. Absolutely. And, and like you said, Steve, over the last year, we've done nothing but try to prove that and, and show folks that, yeah, this is really a vital service that we have to we have to look at going forward. Great. You know, I guess it, another couple of couple of things to think about and just kind of expand a little bit on, on what David's saying, um, too. I mean, I think there is a crisis of local information in America right now, uh, in that there's less and less investment in local in local information resources generally, uh, local local radio, local television. A lot of sort of, there actually a lot of incentives have been created to ensure that that content that you see in, in here is created someplace else rather than created locally. Um, so this causes a huge problem generally. Um, and I think it's something that we can solve if we concentrate on it. And, and our sector is, is uniquely poised to do it, but it causes, it causes problems that you know, are, can, can seem insurmountable if you don't have a daily newspaper or a weekly newspaper in your community. How do you find out about sort of like key civic functions uh, that are going on uh, to be able to even, even do legal work appropriately? I mean, I know, it, you know, like if, if someone passes away, for example, you often have to have a probate notice published in a local newspaper. Well, if the local newspaper is published 75 miles away, it's not really a local newspaper anymore. So even though our, our laws aren't, aren't, aren't set up for the environment that we find ourselves in. The other thing I think it's kind of interesting um, uh, that we need to underline with money, particularly, is um, sort of the role that local government plays in the life of a community media station. And as David mentioned, some, some uh, organizations are, are departments of townships, for example. Well, if the township is having financial problems, a small department has huge issues. It's a little bit like, like say, if, you know, um, you know uh, if you're a flea on the tail of a dog, 
when the dog gets a cold, the flea gets pneumonia. I, I, you know, this is a version of that story just about every, everyone knows. Well, this is true, I think, for a lot of townships, for example, that are, are finding it hard to basically make ends meet in, in the current COVID economy, um, especially in, in communities um, where you're highly dependent on certain types of revenue that basically fell off as a result of changes and in, in upheaval in the economy. So, you know, particularly like in places that are heavily dependent on the tourism sector um, and, you know, those types of vacation communities really suffered. Um, so you, you find that I, I think that's going to be an issue in the next, the next year, I think, for, for many township departments, county departments, um, as sort of municipal finance gets figured out. Typically, municipal finance lags. It's not a leading indicator. So, you know, that sort of the, the bump that we've seen, the, the, the uh, upheaval that we've seen in the economy from COVID, I think will have a, a lagging impact on local government in the 2021-2022. And I think this is sort of a very, very big issue. Um, you know, do you see communication to citizens as a vital public interest? as a vital public service or not. Um, and I think sometimes we, we downplay it because it is ephemeral, you know, it's, it's here today and gone tomorrow. It's, it's, it's not like a road that you build, yeah. um, right? Um, so that civic infrastructure that David's talking about isn't sometimes seen as infrastructure, if you will. Uh, and my fear is that um, you know, towns and counties across America are going to have some real economic problems, um, and in, 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 unless we find ways to shore them up, we could be seeing problems with that civic infrastructure that community media provides. Right. Okay. So a quick question, Mike, on the federal level, uh, the changing with the change of administration and some of the issues that were being discussed during the prior administration with the FCC, can you address some of those and, and do you see that changing uh, as well? Well, I mean, I, 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 it's, we're, still, we're still early days with the Biden administration. Um, I would say that if there's a part of a, there's a package for infrastructure and for local and federal, uh, local and state government aid, that will help with that last issue that I just talked about in terms of overall finances. Um, again, it, it, release, it releases the pressure valve, if you will. Uh, on local government. So I, I, I think that's gonna be a, a huge difference with the Biden administration from what we saw in the prior administration, just in terms of the relationship that the federal government has with locals, local and state government, that they don't necessarily see local and state government as being the enemy, right? So I think that's the first thing. Um, you know, there's, a, there's a, some um, legislation being discussed right now um, and that uh, would basically find ways to relieve some of the economic pressure on community media stations. Uh, Senator Ed Markey has been a, a leader in that work and not just in Massachusetts, but around the country. We'll probably see reintroduction of a bill called the Protecting Community Television Act this spring, um, which I think has a much better chance of support now uh, with both the Biden administration and with the new Senate and House. Um, so we'll be seeing that in, in the spring and again, that bodes well. I think we'll have the ability probably to tell our story better um, because you have um, uh, both an administration as well as a Senate majority that actually wants to hear about local successes in states. And I, and I think, and, and I don't wanna be too partisan here, um, but I think, you know, it doesn't matter if your state is red or blue if you've got a success story that, that you need to tell. and and. To a certain extent, Massachusetts suffered a little bit because it was a, seen as a blue state, right? And so then, you know, you can't really talk about Massachusetts success stories. And we saw this with the FCC under the prior administration, where basically they're interested in finding out about what's happening in red states so they could promote red state politicians, right? I, and, and so I think we'll see a little bit more openness to hearing of from local communities about what works and what doesn't, what the needs are, and a little bit less of a political lens, if you will. Um, and I'm not saying that politics is gone entirely. I, I, the, the thing that I hate about Washington, DC is everyone's talking about 2022 already, right? <laughs> Rather than actually talking about what people need right now. 
Um, so uh, it's still there, but I think there's a little bit less of a, of a, a hyperactive political lens than we saw in the last four years here in Washington, which is a positive thing for local communities. Steve, I know that. Uh, I, so, so Mike, one of my uh, one of my jobs here is to provide on the show is to provide comic relief, and the other is to keep track of the time. And I'm watching the clock, <laughs> and knowing that we're getting close to that time, I just wanted to I just wanted to add that from my perspective, you know, as 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 Steve knows, I do I do these shows, I do probably maybe in a dozen communities, and and to to me, you, you just, it's so clear that. T the cables is replacing the print media as the anchor in so many of these communities. And without it, there will be no community communication. And that's why I keep really trying to promote the, the importance of these shows. It's just well, I, I would say the one other thing, Arthur, to, to be mindful of is, is what's going to happen with that, that weekly newspaper. I've actually talked to a couple of Massachusetts communities that are concerned about that weekly disappearing and what happens what happens with the, the local journalism uh, in those communities? So I think that's actually something that I, I would be mindful of in the next couple of, of, of years uh, in local communities in Massachusetts. It's thinking about like ways that you could be sustaining civic information, journalism, local information that matters. And that's got to be at the, at the top of our mind um, as we're doing our work together. Yeah, good, great. Steve, point. This is a lot of fun. <laughs> Yeah, this is a great show, Arthur. I mean, you know, th this was, even though it was way off of our reservation in terms of our mission, but this was great to hear from, from, uh, from Mike and David. And I think we really hit on some very key points and, uh, you know, both in terms of our demographic, Arthur, but also, you know, what's the future for our young residents and how they participate, get information uh, and, 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 and are part of the community. And we want to emphasize, by the way, that the reason why this show is happening is because Barbara Chisholm is such a big deal. <laughs> Barbara Chisholm at the state and the national level is a big deal. You know, she's, you know, and she, they just think of her as the local. She's a star out there. She's a so treasure. Barbara, we can't argue with that. Yeah. Yeah. Barbara, th thank you for putting this show together. Um, thank you very much, um, Mike and David, for participating. As usual, Steve, always a pleasure. And folks, we hope you enjoyed this. Um, Next time you see Barbara Chisholm, tell her, oh, you're a big deal. <laughs> and we'll look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Ashland. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.